to now we have discussed about uh, anterior relationship diagrams and we have digged deeper into EER diagrams as well. Today we are going to discuss about the relational data model and the and its constraints. This relational data model was first introduced by Dr. Edgar Cobb. This was presented in the ACM uh, communication, communication of ACM in 1970 and you can find the paper in uh, uh, which has a topic as a relational model for large shared data banks. This uh, theory is based on uh, set theory and the work uh, for this work uh, Dr. Edgar Warden uh, ACM Turing Award as well. Uh, first we will go through the informal definitions because it's easy uh, for you to understand uh, these informal definitions so that you can look into the relational model uh, with a clear uh, idea. So this informally these relations looks like uh, tables, tables of values you know that tables have got rows okay so that the uh, relations also got a set of rows okay. and uh, the data elements in each row will represent uh, some facts about uh, the uh, uh, about a real world entity or a relationship Informally, informal way in relational model, we call these rows a tuple. Okay. As you know, the, normally when we take a table, there are rows and columns. Okay. And for the columns, we have column headers. And what column headers would do is, they will give you an indication about the data uh, items that they have under that column header okay so in the same way uh, these in in relations also we have these column headers we call that informal way attributes and also there is a key uh, for each uh, for each relation and these keys will identify the rows or the tuples uniquely. Okay, so each row will have a data item which can be used to identify the tuples. But sometimes there can be instances where you can't find such unique data item in the available uh, in the available uh, data items. So what we know, what we usually do is, we are going to, we are going to introduce a, a key or a, a serial, a sequential number. So we call that, uh, we call that a key as artificial key or a surrogate key. In formal definition, the schema of a relation okay, uh, called R, we say uh, R is the name of the relation and the attributes it has A1, A2 and up to AN attributes. Okay, so that is the formal uh, way that we denote a relation. Okay. And also these relations have tuples tuples has a set of values. We enclose those set of values uh, in angle brackets. These angle brackets these angle brackets uh, are uh, less than symbol and the greater than symbol. Uh, these uh, values in a tuple, the set of values will be derived from a domain. 
so what is that domain okay so for each attribute does domain uh, define okay uh, let's say uh, it's age okay it should be an integer okay so likewise there's a domain uh, uh, which has been defined for each attribute so the values or for the for these data items should be derived from that appropriate domain for each attribute and in the previous example we have seen a table with five tuples we have this is a relation called student which has five tuples for each tuple we have six data items okay in this case we call this uh, tuple is a six tuple because it has six data elements the domains has a logical definition and also we can form we can give a format for that do domain uh, for an example uh, when we take a phone number it should be 10 digit and also we can define a format uh, to indicate that and also the dates okay uh, for date also we can have different formats as well okay. and also when we uh, for certain cases we can be we can use the same domain but in different ways for an example if we take the invoice date and the payment date right this uh, domain will be for both attributes the domain will be date but it acts in a different way the meaning was given by the attribute or the column header so that's why at the beginning we say these column headers will indicate what these uh, data items are. The relation state is a subset of a Cartesian product of the domain and domains of its attributes. So as we know, these attributes will contain the values from the domain, okay, from the appropriate domain. So whatever the uh, result that we have uh, in in those uh, as data items in in those tuples are a, a subset. If we take the Cartesian product of all the domains. Uh, of its attributes then what we have there in the tape in the relation now is a subset of that Cartesian product okay. okay so this is how we are going to represent it for a relation R we say we have a1 a2 up to a in attributes okay for a given relation R attributes are a1 a2 up to a n okay and the state of a relation is a subset of domain a1 into the cartesian product of domain a1 a2 up to a n okay so r a a a1 a2 a n is a schema of the relation as we already have discussed uh, and the R is the relation name, name of the relation we know that and A1, A2 up to AN is the, uh, are the attributes of the relation and R of R okay, is a uh, specific state of the relation and uh, here this uh, we have uh, for the relation we have up to 
T1, T2 up to Tn tuples, okay, where each uh, each T1, uh, Ti is a uh, is a tuple. Okay, so for each tuple we have values, right, which are taken from domain, uh, which are taken from the appropriate um, from the relevant domain. The values will be v1, v2, up to vn because we have n number of attributes. Okay. So these, uh, if we take the informal def informal terms and the formal terms, we in uh, in the formal term in the formal model we say uh, relation. We have relations, and uh, but uh, informally we say uh, we have tables. Okay. And for each relation, we have attributes. These attributes are known as column header informally. Okay. And domain is all the all possible uh, values for a certain column. Okay. There are rows in the table. Okay. We call them tuples. And uh, uh, for the definition of the table, we say schema of a relation if we say schema of a relation it means the table definition right and the state of the relation means the populated table when we insert data into the table we say that is the state of that relation okay so those are the uh, basic concepts of the definitions in the relational data model concept that we find And this, uh, when we talk about the characteristics of the relational schema, relational uh, model, okay, we consider these uh, tuples are ordered, right, as they appear in the um, in a in a tabular form, okay. and also these attributes are ordered according to the uh, or according to the order of the attribute okay if we have a1 a2 up to a n and we say the values are also in that order v1 v2 up to vn when denoting uh, when we, when we consider a tuple uh, the values of a tuple should be atomic we consider they uh, as they are atomic and they are they are drawn from a uh, from a certain domain okay from the relevant domain so they are uh, and uh, when we representing each value uh, we say uh, a i of t right okay uh, attribute the uh, the the uh, the ith, uh, the value of ith attribute of tuple t, likewise. Okay, so this is the value of this is uh, this is the value uh, uh, vi. Okay, value vi. Okay, of attribute ai for tuple t. This is how we are going to denote each, and uh, then uh, then we have to come to uh, then we are coming to the constraints. Okay, so these constraints are certain uh, are a set of conditions that we are, uh, that must be hold in order to consider that uh, a state as a valid state. If you want, if we want a valid relation, a uh, valid state of a relation, so these constraints must be hold on those. Okay, so this uh, there are three main constraints uh, that are defined in a relational model. The first one is key constraint. Okay. And the second one is entity integrity constraint. The third one is referential integrity constraint. Okay, 
so those are the three uh, main constraints uh, defined in the relational model okay and also there are certain implicit constraints okay that is uh, domain constraints okay the domain constraint says uh, for every value for every value in a tuple okay as we have already discussed all the values in the in a tuple under a attribute okay so those values must be drawn from a um, from a from the appropriate domain or the relevant domain okay else it should be null if you can't find a value for that it it can be null okay first we will discuss about this key constraint okay. key constraint um, we already know what is a key okay so key can be used to identify the tuples uniquely okay so the uh, according to the definition we say okay super key of r okay is a set of attributes sk of r with the following conditions so it can be a single attribute or a set of attributes in the relation called R. Okay. Okay. For a key, we already have discussed. They must be able to identify the keys, uh, identify the tuples uniquely. So no two tuples can contain the same value. Okay. So that's a must. So if we if we denote it in a formal way, it says T1 the the value of super key in T1 is not equal to the value of super key in T2. Okay, that is how we denote it. Okay, so this must uh, this condition must hold in order to have a valid uh, state. Okay, and uh, so that's a super key. Okay, the key of R is the minimal super key. Okay, so the minimal super key we call that the key. Okay, so that uh, so this key is a super key. It's also a super key. Okay. Uh, we derive it okay by removing any attributes okay uh, from the k okay result is a set of attributes that is not a super key okay so that uh, super key by removing attributes from the super key okay and uh, if we still can find a uh, uh, an attribute which can be identified the the tuples uniquely we say that's the minimal key okay okay uh, so this is an example uh, for the super key and the uh, and the key so the state and the registration number okay together can act as a key and also the serial number can act as a key okay both are also super keys for car okay and also if we take serial number together with make okay is also unique for each tuple okay if we take the serial number together with make okay it's going to be unique from each tuple for each tuple but still it is uh, the serial number and make together is a super key but not a key Be why because if we removing we can find some attributes that cannot be used to 
identify the uh, tuples uh, correctly okay so it is not a key but a super key okay so as a summary what we can say is all the keys are super keys okay but not all the super keys are key okay any key is a super key but not all the keys are super keys not the vice versa right any set of attributes that includes key right, is a super key so that uh, that is the example given here okay serial number is a key okay together with any attribute we can use them as super keys but not keys okay so the minimal super key we call that a key for a uh, in a relationship in a relation if we have uh, more than one candidate key just like the example that we just considered okay so one of those keys candidate keys will be chosen as the primary key okay for an example the example that we have just con considered state register state and the registration number of the car entity can be a key and also the serial number is a key okay out of them we can select one uh, one of those keys as the primary key okay uh, normally we select uh, uh, select the this uh, we try to be um be, be minimal okay we try to be minimal but the smallest key but that is really subjective okay uh, so that it's not going to apply in everywhere okay whatever the key that you have selected we are going to underline that okay so the primary key will be underlined that primary key will uniquely identify each tuple in the relation okay so the key is uh, so that is the that is the key primary key okay and then we will go into the entity integrity okay the entity integrity means the primary key that we have selected okay can never be can a uh, contain can can never contain a null value for any tuple okay the primary key attributes attributes pk of, of each relation schema r in s cannot be cannot have null values in any tuples of the state of any state of r okay because if it becomes a null okay, you can't identify the tuples so it's simple right so it's very logical the uh, the entity integrity says primary key should not be null and the referential integrity okay now you know that uh, we have relationships between uh, entities okay this constraint involved with those relations okay the, uh, uh, previous two uh, previous two constraints that we have discussed are the key constraint and the uh, entity integrity constraint considered only one uh, relation but here uh, we have we consider two relations okay or the um, we consider relationships okay we say there's a referencing relation and the referenced relation in a uh, in a relationship So that uh, here we introduce something called foreign keys. Okay, you will understand this when when we do the mapping. Okay, if you don't understand this part, just uh, listen to this and uh, read through this. Uh, when we do the mapping, you will understand this properly. Okay, tuples in the referencing relation R one 
ki have attributes uh, f key okay called foreign key attributes okay tuples in the referencing relation okay r1 okay they have foreign keys okay that reference the primary key attributes of the referenced relation okay so every time every time in the, when, uh, when if we want to hold the referential integrity what should happen is okay uh, in the referencing relation there are foreign keys okay which will be refer into the primary key of the referenced relation okay that is the simple idea of that okay okay so there are there, there are foreign keys in the referencing relation which will be referred into the uh, reference relation the primary key of the reference relation so if 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 uh, if if we are going to reference something okay if we are going to reference something okay uh, what should be happen there should be a source to refer refer right there should be a source to refer so the referential integrity says in order to refer okay by the foreign key okay if the foreign key want to refer that okay it should that value should be exist okay that value should exist in the primary key domain okay it should be available in the primary key that value should be there in as a primary key okay a reference integrity constraint okay a tuple t1 in r1 is said to reference tuple t2 in r1 r2 right we say r2 uh, the foreign key of t uh, tuple one okay is equal to the primary key of uh, tuple two right so there's a value exist the referential integrity constraint can be uh, can be displayed in relational database schema from the direct directed arcs from r1 fk to the r2 primary key okay from the referencing relation to referenced relation okay remember that thing uh, you always uh, most of the students that uh, they make they uh, they get confused when when they try to direct the arc okay what you have to do is you have to have a directed arc from referencing table to referenced table okay that means from foreign key to primary key okay and the statement of the constraint if you say okay the value of foreign key column okay of the referencing relation r1 can be either okay there are two cases value of an existing primary key value of the cor corresponding primary key okay so there should there should be an x the value the value that we are going to refer should be exist that should be existing in the uh, referenced relation okay so that's that's very logical right in order to refer there should be a value existing the source should be there okay that is what it says in simple way words uh, or else the case two it can be a null right the value of the uh, r1 okay so that in case two right foreign key in r1 should not be a part of its own primary key so that's obvious and those are the constraints that we are going to uh, that we have to consider and uh, so this is 
uh, how we represent a relational schema okay so the relational schema okay so what is uh, uh, this is for the company uh, database uh, example that we have already discussed we have drawn the er diagram right here we can find six relation schemas okay here we can find six relation schema okay so the 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 first uh, uh, those are employee department department location project works on them the dependent okay we will see how we, how we can map our er diagram into this okay and uh, with the referential integrity okay constraint uh, we said that uh, we have to draw the directed arc from the foreign keys to the primary key from reference in table to the referenced relation okay so that is what they have done here we will be discussing this part again in uh, how we are going to draw this in the uh, in the mapping part okay so we call this uh, what you see here is the relations with data okay we have the so we call this the schema okay and this is the schema with constraints and this is the populated database uh, state okay so this is the populated one The basic operations that we can find uh, that uh, that we can find uh, to change the state of a database are the insert operation, delete operation, and the modify operation. In the insert operation, what we are going to do is we are going to add new tuples into the relations. Into the tables, we are going to add new tuples, and in the delete operation what you're going to do is you're going to delete some tuples from the existing relation okay and also modifying attribute um, modifying uh, operation will uh, change certain values of the uh, relation okay under certain attributes okay it's going to change the values under the attributes okay so these three operations can change the state of a database okay and whatever the change or the uh, change of the state that we have done using the using above uh, above discussed uh, operations the integrity integrity constraints that we have already discussed should not be violated when you do the updates okay so those uh, that should be uh, th that is what you have to have to consider always okay you whenever you do an update for your for the state okay, the constraints should not be violated so that in order to uh, uh, in order to prevent uh, these uh, these violations of integrity constraints what we can do is we can cancel the operations that cause violations the first thing okay restrict or reject options are there so that we can cancel the operations that might be causing violations okay the next thing is perform the operations uh, but inform the user so you can perform it but still you can inform the user about, about the violation okay so the uh, and the other thing other other option is uh, using the triggers okay so that these and uh, these triggers can uh, correct those violations okay 
the triggers are cascade options and the uh, set null option okay so those triggers can be used in order to correct the correct it and correct those violations And uh, if there's any user specified error, error correction routine uh, defined previously, you can run those uh, routines in order to correct these violations. Okay, so those are the four uh, actions that can be taken in, in case of a violation. When we inserting, uh, when we use that insert operation, any of the following constraint can uh, can be violated. All the constraints, okay, can be violated. Domain constraint, because if you have inserted a value that is not there in the domain, you can violate that constraint. And the key constraint, okay, and uh, you may insert a value that is already exist. Uh, in another tuple, the referential integrity you may uh, uh, add a value. Okay, if the foreign key, uh, if you adding a value to the foreign key which is not exist in uh, as a primary key in the referenced relation, it's going to violate the referential integrity. Okay, and the entity integrity you may set the primary key to null in the new tuple okay and also the update operation it can also violate certain constraints okay when you updating it okay uh, uh, you may uh, violate the domain constraints by adding uh, the val by updating the values into a value that is not allowed in the within the domain okay and also the entity integrity constraint by setting some value primary key to null okay and also the delete operation may violate uh, the referential integrity because if you are deleting a primary key value uh, and if if there if there are any uh, referencing relation okay ref, uh, reference which will reference that value of the primary key okay then there will be a violation of uh, in the referential integrity okay so those are the uh, things that uh, we have to discuss under the relational schema you, you should know and uh, there's a small exercise uh, for you to do. Uh, this should be done uh, by uh, following the by following uh, the next lecture as well. Okay, you can uh, try doing this one, uh, but. Uh, if you can't understand this properly, you may go through the mapping concept, mapping of ER and the ER diagram as well. Then you can come back to this exercise and try this out. Okay, so let's move on to the next lecture, uh, which will be about mapping ER diagrams and the ER diagrams that you have learned. Okay, so make sure that you have uh, you're keeping them ready uh, the examples that we have already discussed.